I said, hey, Seth, you think if I really tried, I could sound like Hank Hill, you know. Hello, everybody. This is part three of us trying to paint this Toyota. <laughs> them Japanese make some pretty good trucks. It's the main Kentucky. Them Kentucky and Japanese make some pretty good <laughs> Okay, hey, we're going to set the camera up. I've got to leave because i got church tonight. So I'm going to have to go. I'm going to leave it with these guys. So what they're going to have to do is set the camera. We also should go to church, but Dad's the pastor, so he can't exactly... I can't miss. He can't, he can't be too busy in that. Yeah, I can't. Well, I have been before, but I try to never be. Anyway, so what we're going to do is everything's good. Uh... The, the story on the tailgate and why we wanted to put another coat on it. Okay, I was telling a story a while ago when the camera shut off, right? Right. I'm going to mount this back up here. I'm going to actually leave without my camera. Okay, don't yeah, smash the button. Yeah, I'll pick it up on my way to church because y'all will still be here. Anyway, so Paul, say cheese. We need a selfie stick, don't we? That is a selfie stick. It is a selfie. Okay, anyway, one thing we also do is it's got paint on it. It's completely covered. It is. Uh, it's got four coats of color. Uh, everything is looking good. You can't see through it anywhere. Uh, after your paint dries, tack it. Tack it and tack it. It's got overspray on it. That's too sparkly. It, you know, it could have a ladybug on it or something like that. But anyway, to tell y'all the story on why you double check on your, uh, why you always double check. Uh, I was telling this a while ago. Uh, a friend of mine has a, had a Ford Ranger, one of them Ford Ranger EXPs with the ground effects and all the stuff on it, right? Right. So he got rear-ended and I had to replace a bunch of ground effects and then I had to fix a dent in the tailgate. It, it's basically wiped out the the rear spooler and the bumper and the, like the spooler under the bumper stuff. But I had to fix a small dent in the tailgate. And I painted it. And I was proud of it. Well, what it was is a maroon truck and I used a light gray primer. And uh, when I painted it, I put three coats on it and then I fogged it. Backed it outside and if it was just right, you could see the primer. So the guy comes back to get the truck. I mean, he drove up. I'm like, hey, man, I'll, I'll, I'll fix this. Because, you know, I want it to be right. And he's like, nah, I don't care. It looks good. He said, I'm going to sell the truck anyway. Uh -oh. So he takes the truck to the auction up in Cherokee. Some used car lot dealer dude bought it. And it was gone forever, right? Right. It wound up sitting in a car lot at Salem. A man from our hometown went to Salem and bought that truck. <laughs> so every time I go to Evening Shade, I go past this old boy's house. I can see a, a bit of a, a thin spot over here. I'm going to spray it. Yeah. Matter of fact, you've got enough paint. Right. Yeah. If you've got enough paint, you know what I would do? What? I would chase out all the thin spots. Yeah. I'd put another coat on that tailgate. One fog coat, just put it, man, you can't be, did you put enough in there to do that? No, but I can put more in. Where's your thin spot at? That, that place where we sanded the run out earlier. All right, just fog it a couple times. Yeah, I'm I can also, see that. I also think maybe. Yeah, hey, yeah, inside of here? No, that's flat. Anyway, love you guys. I'm going to go. Uh. Hey, it was good talking to you. If the camera shuts off, yeah, if the camera shuts off, just run it out of time. Uh, it should have at least an hour and a half on there. Uh, I'm going to trust y'all with it. I got to get, yeah, and we'll uh, we'll chase after Nibs and, and Buffett tomorrow and start putting this beast together. Yes. Hey, the guys are going to sign off with all kinds of advice. I'm going to say, go to church, read your Bible. Uh Eat your vegetables. Drink plenty of water. Yeah. Yep. Paul, oh, you have to talk to that camera. I will. I just got to eat. I had to get a slurp of juice.
I was actually drinking water. We don't typically keep juice up here at the shop. It's usually soda and water. Which, soda is not exactly healthy for you, but some of our pet peeve. Not pet peeve. It's like literally the exact opposite. Guilty pleasure type stuff. You know, soda may not be good for you, but it does taste good, so it's hard to resist the allure. The allure? Yep. They call it allure because it's supposed to lead you to your death. Come kiss me. I love you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Y'all take care. Yep. See you later. If you want to, you can put three coats on it so there's plenty to work with. Alright, All right, so I know I like to tell you guys history facts and science facts and all that stuff. And Dad usually tells stories. But today it's going to be the other way around. Dad did not finish his story and I am going to tell a story. Hailing all the way back from when I went to Votech in 21 and 22, Black River Technical College. And I can't really help Seth with anything out right now anyway, so. Uh, so, our story starts, I don't know what date, it was sometime in Votech, but pretty much, uh, Give me a second. I'm, I don't want to get my stories mixed up. There were a few cool things that happened. Um, there was one story about how Seth... Now, this is one of Seth's stories, but it also relates to one of my stories. So I'm going to preface with one of Seth's stories real quick. Seth, at Votech, was put in charge of uh, doing body work in painting a super old, like, actual 1950s Coke fridge. Like, it wasn't one of those hair going. No, it was, it was cool. He was paired with... It was one of those things Butch really wanted done right. Uh, and it wasn't a customer rig, so... Yeah, so uh, it, it was, was all... basically his own thing. He would have people paint stuff for him all the time. Yeah, he would have people paint stuff for him all the time, straight out of his pocket. He also had this one numbskull put on the job that pretty much the way you got to do body work is you got to... When you put your Bondo on there, or... No, no, this is before Bondo was put on. See, just like this truck, you've got to strip off everything that's dead before you can actually spray it. Oh, i got to put my mask on. you got to strip off everything that's dead before you can put good stuff on it. And so that's what they started doing, was they started taking some of that really old 50-year-old paint off. And so, what would happen is, they both had DAs, like, nomadic standards. And so, what you gotta do is keep it flat on there, because if you tip it over to get one spot of it done real fast, what ends up happening is you mess it up real fast. You'll end up making the metal really hot and warping it. Well, you and dig just, a groove in. Yeah, you're digging a groove in. It's just it's terrible. Never tip up your DA. You know, keep it flat on there. You know, no. So, that guy got in. So, what happened was, Bush essentially took him off Seth's project and put them on to me and my buddy's project that we were doing. Which was a, uh, uh, you know, we, me and uh, my friend John up at Votex, we did a lot of like Chevy, uh, a lot of Chevy trucks pretty much. 
Ford F-150, God Ram truck. Uh, you know, I guess me and John did like faculty uh, stuff. And uh, what ended up happening was, uh, I think what it was was we ended up having to fix. I think what ended up happening was John and I, the panels we were working on was like a back door and the side of the bed on one side of the car. So the way that repair works is when you fix these two panels, you're going to end up painting part of the front door and the tailgate. You, usually we would keep the tailgate on for that kind of job. Uh, but pretty much uh, what ended up happening was me and John were in the stage where we were putting Bondo on it. We were past putting Bondo on it and we were uh, putting more Bondo on top of Bondo we had already sanded because you're not always going to get it right your first time. And uh, when this dude that got kicked off of Seth's project came and tried to help us, the first thing he did was, uh, the first thing he did was, uh, ended up sanding some Bondo we had already sanded, like, too far. And so we ended up having to waste more time in Bondo to fix something that was already good to go, you know? And uh, it was very frustrating because we had to, we essentially didn't get to prime it that day because of him coming in and screwing our stuff up. Hey, Seth, yep. I'm going to have to step outside for just a second. Right. Yeah, sorry. Or you can talk to the camera and just tell your story. What? Go ahead and take the camera and just tell your story. No. Oh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what to tell them. Yeah, I'm busy right here. about this is, is that there's never a, you know, while we're doing this kind of job normally, there's never a need to uh, entertain an audience. So, we're not really equipped to do that whilst in the middle of a, of a paint job, you know? Um, not unless there's someone who isn't busy, which there, there usually isn't. But normally when there's three of us here, we're able to sacrifice a worker, you know? And they're able to uh, be busy entertaining the camera instead of working. And as you probably noticed, uh, Usually our dad who gets to do that because he gets to tell all kinds of cool stories. Right now I'm going to give this stuff a bit more time to dry and then I'm going to uh, half drag it again and then we get to spray it clear. Okay, sorry about that. Anyway, I know that that might not be the most funny story in the world as it is like actually frustrating. It's a little bit funny looking back on it, but at the time, John and I were pretty upset. But like, we didn't, we didn't want to be super mean to the guy he was just doing what he was told. He was just doing it really badly, you know? But, uh, 
Another pretty funny story around that same time was uh, when we were working up at, when we were going to school up at Votech, uh, we had this one truck come in that was an extremely unique color. It was pretty cool too, but the the main problem is, is, uh, okay, up at Votech, and, or, cause, uh, they didn't get their paint from anywhere. They ordered all of their, they ordered a bunch of paint supplies and made the paint that they used in house. So they also had the stuff required to measure out paint, measure the color of paint and stuff like that. Uh, and with that, they had like these two, like, one of them was like $10,000 and the other was like $20,000 uh, paint scanners that, you know, you'd by hand go and scan the paint on the car. And the thing is, it was really cool, but it didn't work. Like, we, every time we had to scan paint, it was, it was so bad. Seth, did you ever scan a single car with those paint scanners that actually worked, like, first try or as intended or anything? No, you're supposed to scan it three times and then pick the... No, 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 I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, like, you, you would scan it three times, pick the one that looked best, and then you'd go and mix it, and then it would look terrible. Uh, I never had that problem, actually. Are you serious? Yeah. You must be the only person that didn't have that problem. At least I don't remember it. Uh, me and John hated it. Me and the other John hated it. Freddie hated it. <laughs> the Mexican dudes hated it. It sucked. Nope. Let me tell you right there, now, nobody liked that paint scanner, dude. Everyone would have rather just used paint chips. Nobody liked the paint scanners. And uh, it was incredibly frustrating whenever we had to resort to the paint scanner for anything. Because it was like, okay, well, it's just not going to work for like three days until this magical breakthrough happens. And, uh, man, okay, one story from when I was in Votech, uh, in the back of the shop, because it was like a giant warehouse-sized shop, like, it was probably f ten times bigger than this building, and I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating. I, I seriously think that's what it was, how big it is. But, uh... At the far end of the building was a washing bay. And they had all of the stuff. They had like tire soap, Windex, blah, 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 blah. You know, they don't... They had everything that we've got. They just had a lot more of it because, you know, it was a high production shop school. And uh, pretty much the... John... This happened my first year, by the way. So John and I were... Uh, getting this car we had painted it sanded it buffed it put it together it looked amazing we took it out to go wash it we were washing it at the same time as these other guys were washing theirs they had just gotten theirs done too and uh you know we were just a bunch of you know t 20 year old and younger kids uh messing around we started spraying each other with water hoses and stuff because we thought it was funny and fun and stuff. And, like, it wasn't, like, it was, in the, like, right when school started. It was hot. You know, like, I think what happened was some dude said, oh, man, it's so hot. And then they got sprayed. And then I was like, is it so hot now? And, you know, and then it, you know, erupted from there. And it was all fun and games until some dude decided to take one of those spray bottles of tire soap and start spraying people with it. I got in, I ended up getting sprayed in the eye with tire soap. My uh, face swelled up. And like, I almost beat up. I, I almost hit the guy. 
I didn't because I didn't want to get expelled on like my third week up there. But like the moral of the story is limit the amount of time you are around stupid people because they will get you hurt or they'll just freaking hurt you and think it's funny or something. And it's like, you know, my dad's told me that my whole life and I didn't realize how important it was until I started spending time around stupid people. And I'm like, oh my gosh, dad was right the whole time. Like he always is. Well, do you think we're about ready to tack off the tailgate and get to spring? Yup. All right, chat, we are officially about to start spraying clear. So be sure to put your respirators on. And remember, these things are supposed to be airtight. So what you want to do is make sure you can't breathe out of this airtight. And you may want to make sure you can't suck in through these airtight. I'm going to go ahead and get the tailgate real quick. Oh. Come on. What? I'm on thin spots. For real? Yeah. But yeah. The tailgate looks good, though. I don't know if it's good enough to, to do, to tack it, though. I think we're just going to need a few more minutes before we start spraying clear. I guess that's, just, that's why you want to... That's why you want to check, check, double check. You know, you don't want to... You don't want to... Uh, pretty much, you just want to keep checking for uh, bald spots until you start spraying clear. You know, you don't want to ever say, Oh, well, you know, send it. Because you can't just send it, man. You got to do it right. You got to do it good. Yep. That's what Master Uwe would want. Right? Sure. I, chat, I, I want you guys to know I'm joking. But uh, that's what any like body man that takes pride in his job would tell you is you can't just send it. You, you got to do your job right. Or else, you know, people can't respect your work if you don't, you know? A, if you're the oh, you know, it, here's the thing. Little, uh, tidbit of profound wisdom for you. A job that's not done right is done wrong. Right. Here's another profound tidbit of wisdom. If you can't respect your own work, then nobody else can. Yeah. I live by that. That's a good one. That actually is. All right. That actually, is good. It works as a saying, and it, it, it's a legit advice. I mean, it's not one of those like, well, you know what they say. Never. Well, I mean, I guess it could be. But, uh. Right. Okay. Another. Another funny story uh, from me and Seth's days in Votech is, uh. When we were going to Votech, oh, the Black River Technical College lives right next to a Jordan's gas station. And if you don't know what a Jordan's gas station is, you're missing out, okay? Here's the thing. I do not ever want to live in a big city or anywhere, but I pray to goodness. I, 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 I pray that... Evening Shade gets just big enough to get its own Jordan's gas station. Because if that happens, what's gonna end up happening is we're gonna end up getting two more Jordan's gas stations like less than a mile apart from each other. Because that's exactly what's happened in Pocahontas and pretty much every other town I've ever seen a Jordan's in. So, what's so great about Jordan's, again? What's so great about Jordan's is... Well, nothing in particular. They just don't do anything wrong. You know? Their gas isn't super expensive. 
They've got really good food, you know. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of tweakers in many Jordans. Admittedly, I've only ever been in Jordans in Pocahontas, but like there are, there are tweakers in Pocahontas. So if they're not going to if they're not going to Jordans, then that's where I want to be. But anyway, so one day during we were painting and we were in kind of a state right now where we couldn't actually continue on to the next stage because of some stuff someone had to do. So we all piled up in the tr in some dude's truck. A bunch of us hopped in the bed of the truck. We went down to the Jordans. And then <laughs> when uh, we all got down there, uh, the dude uh, that drove us down there ended up actually running over a curb or something like that. And uh, he almost messed up his tire really bad. Anyway, so we pulled into uh, Jordan's and everyone was being profane as if something like really terrible had happened to all of them. You know, typical overreaction. Uh, and like the guy that did it, like... I can very understand I can understand why he was so upset. He thought he knocked his oil pan loose from out like bust a hole in it or whatever. He thought he messed up his oil pan. So he parked at Jordan's and he's like, "Oh my gosh." And he looked under it and it was totally fine. Nothing happened. But what ended up happening was all of us went in. We all pretty much knew what we wanted, got our stuff and got out. And there was one dude. It was the same guy that messed up your uh, spark plugs. So this would have actually this would have actually been in our second year of Botech. Uh, one dude stayed like stayed in there for like 15 minutes. Keep in mind, this whole ordeal was supposed to take us about 15 minutes. But this dude went in and stayed in Jordan's for like 15 minutes. And so some dudes went back in to go get him. And they came back out and you're like, we should just leave him. We, you know, we got to get back. We just need to leave this guy. He's not moving. And uh, so what ended up happening is, you know, people were like, no, we can't leave the guy. And everyone else is like, oh, we totally can leave the guy. And, uh, you know, about like why when it had been decided that yeah, the rest of us aren't going to get in trouble for this guy to stay in Jordan's. And we were about to leave. You know, he came out and flagged us down. And like, where are you at? You know, he apparently, he had finally decided on what he wanted to get as soon as we were about to leave. Personally, I just don't think he didn't want to be at Votech. I don't think that's what it was. And so we got in, got back, right? And, uh, you know, we drove back and everyone all like, oh, what was taking you so long? Look, man, it didn't take me that long. You guys were just, you know, taken like you guys are just went too fast. And it was like, it totally did take him too long. He took he spent like 15 minutes in a gas station. Like who needs to sit in a gas station? Who needs 15 minutes to decide they want? like a monster and two chicken strips like it did not take him 15 minutes he was just wasting everyone's time and so we got back to it and uh you know butch is typically a very lenient guy but we were in the middle of a paint job and had been gone for almost 30 minutes because of this dude when we it was supposed to take us like half that time Cause like we needed to get some new paint mixed and everything. Like we didn't just paint some stuff and walk out and leave. Like, but you know, we, we had a strict time we were supposed to come back and he, you know, Butch was about to light into us and everyone was all like, look, man, it's this guy. He, we don't know what's up with him. He was, he, he didn't want to leave Jordan's or whatever. And so Butch just took like one look at him, like, 
And keep in mind, at this time, Butch is like 75 or whatever. And so, you know, he understood that we if we didn't want to, like, abandon this dude at a Jordan's, like, five minutes away from us. Which I think we should have. It was a five-minute walk. He could have walked back in five minutes. I did not want to... Well, no. It was about a five-minute drive at, like, 20 miles an hour. So he could have walked back onto campus and back to the shop in about 20 minutes. Probably. I think we should have left him. I mean, like, really. He, the guy was just being petty about it. Anyway, uh, of course, Butch knew how petty this guy was and everything. And he ended up not getting on to anybody. Uh, he ended up not getting on to anybody, including the guy that was trying to make us late for everything. Which, you know, I guess Butch just didn't want to deal with it. He had too much going on. We were trying to get, like, two cars painted that day. And he had a whole bunch of uh, high schoolers uh, that were uh, having some trouble. Some During this time, some high schoolers were actually having, like, fabricate parts of bed panels and stuff. And, you know, I guess Butch just didn't want to deal with it. But, uh... Yeah, that was the totally interesting story, rambling story about how uh, I would have left some dude at a Jordan's in Pocahontas, but it wasn't my truck and I was sitting in the bed saying, we should just leave this guy. I don't want to get chewed out by Butch. But uh, we ended up getting back and painting everything and it ended up going good. And then... You know, like, I was fully expecting Butch to chew that guy out or for everyone else to chew him out. No one cared, though. That I guess that's the worst part of the story, is that after everything was said and done, no one cared that the guy was being a, a, a total jerk to the rest of us. You know? What, so was he trying to get you guys in trouble on purpose? Well, I mean, you were there. He was just trying to make us all... Yeah. I think he was trying to make us in trouble on purpose just because he was the guy that kept getting in trouble for everything. You know, you remember the guy that kept messing with your spark, that messed with your spark plugs in the green car, yeah, right? Yeah, I know that. It was that guy. You know, dude, I'll, I'll be real. The, nobody liked that guy at the end of the year except for the other screw-ups that, like, didn't do anything right. And it's not that they couldn't do anything right. It's that they didn't put in enough effort to do anything. You know? I guess that's the worst part about it. I've said that probably like three times now. No more bald spots? Uh, I don't think so. But I'm, I'm, I'm making sure. But it is when I brought the gun up, it spat out some nasty splotch thing and, and I had to you had to sand it and that ended up making a bold spot yeah so now I'm spraying these other two spots real quick then we're going to tack it up and then we're going to clear it well we're going to try and get some clear on before dad gets back and takes his phone yep we it's, may because the thing is typically we we put on about two coats of clear on on any given job for about 35 minutes. And here's the thing. Nothing too terrible has gone wrong. We just want to take enough time to where we make sure nothing goes too terribly wrong. Because, you know, you end up messing one thing up and it it is it is so Joker at that point, you know. Uh, and we can't just say, you know, you know, whatever man will do it tomorrow because you know it's got to get painted today we gotta start putting it together tomorrow so you just gotta take your time and do it right and we're still probably gonna get out of here at about 5 30. once we start putting on clear we're not gonna be here that too terribly long yeah 
we could still be out of here in about 20 to 30 minutes. And it's only 5.08. All right. So, obviously, once we get everything sprayed on, we've got to leave. Make sure nothing... You know, make sure we don't contaminate the crime scene and everything. But, uh... Yeah, like I said, we just gotta... Take our time. You know, here's the thing. How did I say it earlier today? I don't remember, but we can probably watch the video and figure it out. People, hold on, no. People that wait are afforded patients... And people that do not wait are only afforded anxiety. So you just gotta, you just gotta wait and do it right. You know, you gotta take your time. You gotta have patience. You gotta have patience. You gotta have hope that everything will work out right. You gotta have diligence to make sure everything goes right. Man, that almost sounded professional. I do want you guys to know that I am a professional. I've been doing this for like 10 years. You know, and while I don't have every aspect of this job mastered, I can figure it out well enough to do it. You know, I may not be the best at painting, but I can do decent enough to where I can call myself a professional at the very least. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tack off the uh, tailgate. I think I'm, it's got to be ready. Yeah. I don't know that it is. Oh, no, it is. Do, 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 do. Anyway, what's what's one funny story that you have from your times in Votex, Seth? I don't know. Uh, I don't remember a lot of what happened in Votex. Aside from, like, obviously the, the skills I learned. Some days were kind of boring, if we're being honest. There, 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 there were plenty of uh, normal, boring, nothing went wrong things. The first job I did was watercolor. Oh yeah, we and, learned uh, how to paint with water, water-based paint. And uh, the thing about it was, was that I. Uh, I'm just going to take a sit, seat real quick. I'm still going to be talking and stuff, though. The way you spray watercolor is very different than the way you spray solvent colors. Watercolor is much easier to spray. And, um... I put on my watercolor paint and then put on my solvent-based clear, but I didn't change my spray style. And the thing about watercolor is that it kind of lays out after you spray it. And then all the water in the paint dissolves. It like evaporates into the room around you, leaving all the color and pigments and stuff on the surface. That's how it dries. But solvent you can't spray like that because if you do it like that if you spray solvent the way you spray water it's going to be on too thick and striped but i sprayed the solvent clear the same way because uh i can't remember if it was like i just didn't uh mentally prepare myself for it to be different or had trouble switching between the two or I just thought the clear was water-based too. But whatever the reasoning for me making this mistake, I ended up putting on the clear way too thick and, and it ran really bad. I 
thought it was funny because um, while I was standing, because I did all right on, on one side, and then the other side was just horrible, and I remember my instructor saying, yeah, I don't know why I let that happen, but I saw it happening, and I just didn't say anything about it. Yeah, okay, that's comforting. <laughs> right. But yeah. It's comforting to hear the job you're doing being described by your teacher as that happening. Anyway, I'm going to let that stuff dry in that corner real quick. And I'm going to get this tack rag and go over these other two. I'm going to go over the hood and the tailgate and this side of the truck. And we are about in the final stretch here. And by final stretch, I mean we're getting ready for the second half of the job, basically. Well, no, well, not we, really. We start getting clear on it. It's yeah. pretty much. Because here's the thing. Clear. Uh, you, you've obviously noticed us tacking it between coats. We even draw attention to it numerous times. Thing is, you don't do that with a clear coat because clear coat doesn't set up. Because here's the thing about paint is that when it's dry enough to touch with your fingers and it not ruin the job instantly, it's still wet enough that you can't like sand it or anything. You know? Thing is, clear coat doesn't get to this in-between dry and wet phase that paint gets. Clear coat is wet and then it's gummy and then it's dry. But every stage that clear coat gets in from it being sprayed on to it being dry can be ruined by touching it with a tack rag. So, tacking. Come on. Can you take this thousand? There's a little bit of trash on the passenger side of the hood. Passenger side of the hood. Clear coat in every stage. Oh, I, back here in the back. If you look close, you'll see it. It's more around the middle. Uh, a tack rag will ruin clear no matter what phase of dryness it's in. See, I can yeah, already tack this over here. I can already tack this over here, and I just sprayed it. Right? Cannot do that. Clear with, coat uh, clear will coat. stay in a pliable state until it's set up. And this state will carry the indent of a tack rag. So what you need to do is get all your tacking done first, and then you spray it once. Yeah. And of course, yeah, you we, spray are, it once, we are going to put two coats on here. We're going to put three. Yeah? Yeah, we're going to go and do three. On the whole thing? Yes. Okay. What you do is you spray your coats, and unlike paint, you do not spray. You no, unlike paint, you do not tack in between your coats. Also, it's just a different experience spraying clear compared to paint. Yeah, ah, uh, because the thing is clear. It's stickier than paint, but also runnier at it's, the same time. Yeah, it's it's so like the thing is you've gotta be a little bit faster, you've gotta hold the gun like just a little bit away farther. The thing is if you hold it away too much farther, then you'll get it on dry. Then you'll get it on dry and that you definitely don't wanna have to deal with that. And so you don't actually have to change the pressure of your gun or anything. You know, the only thing that really changes is your technique a little bit. 
I'm sure Seth probably said that already, but I, I didn't get to that point yet. <laughs> oh, sorry. No. Didn't mean to steal your No, it just means you didn't repeat me. It's not my video. It's our video. Right. It's called This Is How We Do It. This is how we do it. Part throws. This is how I do it. Part throws. Part throws. Yeah, we're just about ready to clear. clear. Is there anything else we need to do before we start clearing, good sir? They say he does not think so. Is the magic nombre. No. It takes throws. That's the magic nombre. Throws. Anyway, I'm gonna go get your host. Did you already put the guy in the clear the gun? I believe so. Again. And again and again and again. Okay. Yeah. Cause I can't I couldn't help but keep making mistakes. Hey, they are not mistakes until they roll out of the shop. Yeah. That's why I was right. telling the camera, you just gotta take your time. That's I think, think yeah. isn't, isn't that something Butch said at Tech? They're not a mistake until it rolls out the shop. That's something Butch said, that's something Dad has said to us. You know. I always re remember I always remember Dad's wisdom being a little bit more uh, profound in a way that like in actuality it sounded much more like a life lesson like ancient Chinese proverb right. that was trying to be about <laughs> body work. Well the thing is do you know how much Chinese proverbs are based off of trade jobs from back in the day. Right. You know, you could make not-so-ancient Chinese proverbs about what we're doing. Yeah, it's like an old Chinese proverb will be like, you do not destroy the... Yeah, it's like old Chinese proverbs will be stuff like, the wise carpenter does not measure twice before cutting because he knows it requires more measurements. And then... Friggin' a carpenter's shop policy will be like, go thence into the fields and slaughter your enemies. <laughs> okay. For right. they, go hence into the fields and slaughter thy enemies, for they detract from the business that could be making its way towards your property. Exactly. Right. Remember. And that's called venture capitalism. That's called venture capitalism. Remember, remember everyone. No matter what right. economic system you live under, it's event it eventually gets up to capitalism somewhere on the ladder. You know, because someone's making the money. Oh yeah, someone's making money. Okay, I'm sure you like. Before I touch the front with this, I see some, some more tacky stuff. Alright. That's why, you know, check, double check. We, I mean, we were just talking about, you know, trying to come up with a way to put more words in the phrase measure twice, cut once. Right? Yeah. See, I measured like three times, missed a little bit, and then got it before I actually went to the point of no return. Exactly. That's why it's called. It, it's not a mistake till it leaves the shop. Exactly. Alright. Ready? Yeah. I try not to pull my shirt up. Sorry. All right, I'm gonna take this to the other side while you start saying. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Hey, yeah.
Yeah. Wait, what? Is there a reason you and Dad shut the light off up there? No. I didn't realize it was off. I gotta go ahead and turn it off. That would be awesome. That would be most welcome. Let me check this thing. Yep, we're still going. Sorry if we're not talking as much right now. We're trying to make sure we don't mess anything up. But uh, if you may, if you, I'm gonna point the camera at Seth real quick. If you notice, Seth's going faster. And he's a little bit farther away because he doesn't want the clear to run real bad. Also, this is... Yeah, I have something very important to confess to you guys. I'm not very good at spraying clear cup. Yeah. In case it isn't obvious for my story of... Uh, in case it wasn't obvious for my story of running it real bad in college... Right. Hey, did you go down the bed or anything? Yes. Already? That's crazy, bro. Well, I'm going to go to the other side and help Seth while he's up there. Hi! I don't know if they can see me. Messing with the camera that much, but all right, so I'm not gonna grab the camera and take it around a whole lot because I don't want to stir up dust or drop that phone or anything. But uh, one important thing to uh, be sure of when you're doing this is uh, when you start clearing, that actually is a point of no return. You want to make sure everything is done before you start clearing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, clear, clearing is just like when you start painting. It is a point of no return. Because if you start clearing and you find something messed up, you've got to, you got to, you know, you can't just restart. You know, you have to fix it while the clear is still on there and then clear over it again. And you definitely don't want to breathe it in. There you get the hose. Yep. Hello. Uh, 
I think you still need to get the hood and then this coat will be oh wait. This coat won't quite be done yet. What? This coat won't quite be done yet. Oh. What? The spots. What's up? The spots you say that. I only need thousand of them. Or I tack them off. That's just because they that those are just scratch marks. I, I tack it off. Are you sure that would be good to I don't know, I can send it more if you want me to. No, no, no. I'm gonna spray the color and then we'll No 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 no, it's not going through, is it? Oh it's still scratches. No, we can clear over a thousand. You can clear over a thousand or clear. Okay, but if you want to spray more color, hold on. I don't. I seriously don't think you'll need to put more color on there, man. Okay, it's your funeral. Well, I mean, we we'll figure it out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If you want, if you really want to put. Uh, more color on it, what we should do is have you hop in the bed of this before you, uh, before you put, I don't know, I don't think we should put more color in it. I'll be real. Okay. Yeah, I gotta get the bag of this anyway. Alright, hold on. Okay. Sorry you guys have to see that. Sorry about that, guys. Because, I mean, we've, we've cleared over a thousand before. Yes, but that was already clear as my point. Oh, you're probably right. Because now that I think about it, we've had to do this stuff before. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's like, if you're gonna come in and, and paint something, like clear something later after spraying color, then what you do is you, is you go over it with some color. Alright, now for, I actually am going to turn the camera because Seth's just painting this hood. Look at that. That's going on smooth. Now, it's about 5.30 right now, so we're not getting out of here by 5.30, but we are going to get out of here before 6, if, you know, if nothing goes horribly wrong with the clear. Yeah, we're probably only going to be here about another 20 minutes. Most. Okay. I'm going to have to make some more clear before we get out. Yeah, but that, uh, you know, that'll be okay. And remember, we cannot pack it. Yep. That means now we get to play a, a good old-fashioned game of weight. Yep. Here are the rules. Oh, wait a second. I don't know. We've already shown them putting on clear and everything. Do you do you think we should go ahead and sign off? Because yeah. Dad'll be here in a minute. We'll wait till Dad comes here to pick up his camera. He's gonna be in a hurry when he stops by, though. Let's do a sign off. Yeah, let's do a sign off in case Dad's in a hurry, and also in case it runs out of space. Yeah. All right. Let me this way. Let me I'm turn going it to up. Place just... my hand on. No. Um. Hold on. Let me see if I can turn it up a little. There we go. Sorry it's rocky, guys. That, that part doesn't work very well. It didn't when we bought it. Anyway, we want to thank you guys for sticking with us. Yep. Uh, for those of you that did finish the video, and we want to, you know, thank you, the subscriber commenter who, who suggested this video. I, yes. I don't remember your name, but uh, thank you for your interest in what we do. And uh, just uh, 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video and all the little bumps and uh, issues yeah, we thank, had. Because, uh, you know, here's the thing. Uh, thank you for waiting around with us because I guess a lot of the stress of painting is that you just got to kind of wait around for stuff to get done. And there's yeah. nothing you can do to speed it up. You know? Yeah. And if something goes wrong, that's another... Yeah. However long you gotta wait. You know, but uh, we've showed you the processes of painting. We've showed you how our gun works. We've showed you how clear works. Uh, we just want to thank you so much for sticking around with us. Uh, yep. Don't touch the clear on them your way out. That'd yeah. be mean. Yeah. But, uh... I guess we gotta do the, it. the only thing we'd have to show them after this is, you know, like how to clean out the gun and everything. We'll do a different video on that. No, we, we can... We'll, okay, we'll sign off later. And if we have to push stop, we'll press stop. I don't know. What do you want to do? I'm just going to sign out. And if Dad picks up his phone before we finish, then that's it. All right. Go so ahead, uh, we can, are we going to leave it running? or? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, uh, drink plenty of water. Get plenty of sleep. And... Uh, I'm trying to think of new advice I haven't said before. Okay. That was incredibly profound. Um, don't get addicted to smoking cigarettes if you not if you're not already, because it's a very hard hard habit to break. You know, people because uh, you know any. Anyone that smokes that'll tell you it's an incredibly difficult habit to break. So the best thing to do is not start it. Also, don't gamble for the same reason as smoking cigarettes. It's uh, just one of those addictions that's really hard to break. And uh, whenever you stub your toe, do not scream out profanities. Because no one likes that. And that's my advice for today. You think it's ready for another cover line? Uh, I see a spot that needs more spray on. Oh, okay. <sighs> this is not another coat. That's what it is. Now we play the waiting game. Yep, we play the waiting game. The thing is, we can't clean because we pick up dust. Can't sand or anything. We'd be making dust. We can't dust because we kick up clean. Yep. This is why typically we paint a separate building. That building is not available at the moment. Unavailable. I don't know. Um, I don't really like the idea of the idea of what? Nothing. Nothing. Um, while we're waiting on all this to dry, um, I don't know if there's any other video ideas you guys would like to see. Comment them. I mean, this video was a video idea. So, um, you know, we'd like to hear what you guys want to see from our channel. Uh, different ideas, stuff like that. But yeah, mainly we just want to thank you guys for, for watching and caring. But yeah. I'm probably going to go ahead and shut it off now. Because just there's two... Here's the thing. It's 20 whole minutes of waiting. It's about 20 whole minutes of waiting between... Between yeah. coats of clear, yeah. Between coats of clear. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and shut 
the camera off and uh, let you guys get on with your day. So yeah, everything we said earlier about drinking plenty of water. And, uh, yeah, I gave some pretty sound advice. He I did. Believe. So you, know, if you don't plan on quitting something, don't start it. You know. Yeah. All right. You want to go ahead and uh, uh, give another quick sign off. I hope you guys have a nice day. Uh, yep. Be sure to read your Bible, oh. pray, and, uh, you know, be sure to thank God for the little things in life, because if you're not going to thank Him for the little things, you're not going to think to thank Him for the big things. Yep. And, uh, yeah. Bye, everyone.